like here in the past few weeks, some of the things you, you've talked to us about is about the ebb and flow of the season, uh, and also remaining kind of even keeled. I think you said even level-headed. Is there a time when urgency is demanded, when some kind of change is required, something to, to jolt the team is necessary? And how do you know when the time is right? Well, um, there is a time and there is a place. And, um, you know, I can appreciate and understand completely the question. Um, is it appropriate to, you know, turn over a spread with a group of guys that show up every day and bust their ass and prepare? And no, it's not. It might be for some people. Um, do you want to see demonstrative? Um, you know, for me personally, um, unnatural, aggressive body language or conversation during a game. People may want to see it to think that's going to fire the troops up. Um, and believe me, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it um, if I thought it was necessary. But um, clearly, you know, listen, you play a game like that, you, we played more than we're used to playing. I can't alibi any of that, Derek. I cannot do that. Um, but we also just got three wins in a row on three hard-fought competitive baseball games where guys played their tails off. Um, and quite honestly, if you look tonight's game, would I have an issue with something? But yeah, possibly, but what's the issue with? Tyler O'Neill goes back and makes a great play in a nine to one game. Lane Thomas goes in there and makes a great play against the fence in a in a you know, a game. Um, you know, you got guys that are giving effort. We're hitting balls, you know, we're, we're you know we weren't very you know, Carlos was not in, not sharp tonight. You know, is that um, we weren't able to swing the bats and put anything together. You know, we start off the first inning. You know, Eddie hit strokes a double. Um, Dylan does a great job, you know, of battling his tail off. Eddie does a fantastic job of getting over and getting a great read on the ground ball to third. And Goldie, you know, infield back, two strikes, hits his ground ball, and we're up one nothing, feeling good about life. And, you know, we go back out, and we just couldn't execute pitches. You know, more balls and strikes and balls out of the ballpark. So, I mean, you know, I, I do understand the, you know, but what do you, and I talk about this, think about this all the time. You know, what needs to be, you know, what needs to be different? We've isolated things and figured it out. We just got to be more consistent as a group. And, um, but I'm not going to go and, and go full metal jacket on a group of guys that are laying it out there as best they can. You see them in there and, you know, these guys are hurting, you know. If I saw indifference, saw lack of effort, uh, I saw, you know, just giving away competition, yeah, I, you know, and I have and would say something. That's done in private, you know. As far as the lineup goes, you know, we, we have what we have, and it's, a, it's been plenty good. So um, I don't know if I'm getting uh, making sense to you about what I'm trying to articulate. Um, because I don't want to turn a blind eye to it, but you know, you you win three in a row, and it's like taken for granted. And two days later, it's it's you know, what you got to do something drastically different. And I mean, we did went out and got um, Wade LeBlanc, who came in and threw three great innings tonight, you know, and and was an incremental improvement to our group clearly from last night and tonight. I don't know what else to, to share with you on that one. I do understand it, though. I think that, you know, I understand the question and effort is usually a third rail, and that was not my intention. But and neither was it to dismiss three consecutive wins against the Marlins, which did happen, as you said. You know, those are in the books. Um, but it's also 13 losses in 18 games. And there, there are some elements of tonight's game, please push back if you disagree, where some of the things where you have pointed out improvement for step backs. Yeah, I mean, look, I said we've improved, but I mean, you know, it's not, 
I mean, we're not perfect, and we're going to have games, and we didn't throw strikes. Carlos didn't throw as many strikes tonight. You know, breaking ball got away twice, hit a guna. You know, he's behind and counts. He's trying to shrink the zone. He got paid for it. I mean, that's how – made him pay. That's how That's how it works. I mean, you know, um, I, I, you know, I don't want to push back because I don't want to push back too aggressively because you're right, but I can't say that we're going to play perfect every night and we're going to throw strikes every single night, but I can't sit there and not – be aware when we do it well and you know we get beat um you know we we, we beat ourselves now is it frustrating absolutely um do we need to be more, more consistent yes um i can't alibi that i won't you see the offense trying to force an issue a little bit i mean down like that after a positive start which has been too much yeah, I can see that. I mean, you know, listen, it's um, we got to score more runs. <laughs> you know, we can talk about expected slug and expected um, all these different numbers that are are in our favor from an, from that standpoint. But you know, we all know it's a result oriented gig, and um, yeah, our offense has to be more consistent. We were talking before the game, and I can run it down again. You know, I mean, Eddie. Has been pretty good. His OPS has gone down a little bit from the left side recently, but he's he's been one of the leaders in the National League in hits. He's played pretty darn well. He's been lauded nationally, rightfully so. Dylan, you know, going to be in the Rookie of the Year conversation. You know, Goldie and Nolan are human, and um, they've had some big swings for us this year. Yachty's having an offensive year that's really as good as he's had in several years. O'Neal's on pace for an all-star game. Um you know, Sosa's played very well. You know, Paulie was swinging the bat well and is still getting his rhythm back, it looks like. You know, maybe that hit gets him going a little bit. But, you know, more than capable guy. Just about putting it all together, you know. We just hadn't been able to do it. And, um, you know, if you want to take have anybody to have any responsibility that, I'll, I'll take that. Katie Wu, the athletic. And the way the ball is, like you mentioned, come out and be able to provide length in two different opportunities and Wade especially was effective. And, and Jake, too, was able to settle down. Is this a case where either are building up to go longer or maybe even in a start role if the case is necessary? Uh, I think, you know, Wade has been built up and he could do that. That's why we were able to feel comfortable with him. Uh, he's probably on his last hitter. We didn't want him going past 40. I mean, he was on a routine where his start would have been yesterday because he has been starting um, but he threw you know took two hitters yesterday so we didn't want to ride him too much past 40 today but you know so he's built up to answer your question and, and Woody you know um, it's hard to build a guy up to a 85 pitch mark during the season um, so I don't know if that's reasonable but um, it would if we were intentional about doing it we could make anything happen. And then this kind of going back to Derek's, but I, to Derek's point, but I mean, we've talked about this before. This clubhouse is level-headed. They obviously believe in the talent, but during stretches like this, teams can sometimes kind of press. How is a clubhouse? How can they avoid doing that? Because often when we press, it, it can get worse. And have you felt that they're pressing by any means? I mean, yeah. Look, this. Uh, I mean, who's not pressing on some level? You know, I mean, we. Right. I mean. You know, we have to answer the questions, right? We have to answer right. the questions that that are appropriate to answer. Um, and we have to look up and, you know, we play a game in front of, you know, a lot of people. And that's wonderful. It's a great opportunity. We're blessed to do it. Um, but people are human, too. Um, you know, the, the thing that's probably a wonderful trait of this group is the fact this group cares more than anybody has any idea about. I wish people could have a glimpse, including back to, and I'm going to probably talk for just a second, um, including back to last year, which I'll get to in a minute. If you had any idea, like I can promise you right now, we got three of our regulars in the weight room right now. We have another two to three guys looking at video. We have pitchers reviewing video right now. We probably have four coaches right now looking at video. We have probably six conversations taking place about tonight's game. All right? So, yeah, my point saying all that is people are invested. 
And when people are invested to the level that this group's invested in and they care to the level they care, yeah, there's gonna, and it doesn't work out. And you're not meeting your own expectations, which are high, then yeah, people may press. Now, the flip side of that is we know we can play. We know what we're capable of. So it's not, and it is a fine line, and there are conversations. There are hard conversations, to Derek's point, that take place. No one's in there alibying it. But collectively as a group, you know, not going to go in and, and get after people or try to shake it up when there's a group of people that are preparing and playing. And if anything, when things don't go well, it probably needs to be pulled back and just go play and, and not kumbaya, but just trust and enjoy, and, and, and that's a healthy thing. And we know what that looks like. And the other part of this is that the high majority of this clubhouse went through that candidly I don't feel I got credit for last year because I feel like I'm always having to defend this group. Okay, and I will, and I won't defend anything blindly because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty transparent guy and I'm a truth teller. But this group last year went through the most amazing obstacles you may ever see in sports and came it through with flying colors and made the playoffs and it was a whole hum like, yeah, okay. That's the same group that's in this clubhouse now that went through that kind of adversity in a pandemic with 11 double headers. Now, can we live in the past? No, we can, we, can, we can rely on it. We can't exactly lean on it. I don't know if I got the words right. Not rely on it, we can remember it. We know what it takes. We didn't, we stayed together last year. We stayed true to our processes. We made adjustments when appropriate and people stepped up. We're going through a stretch where the team's banged up a little bit and we're giving it and laying it out there the best we can every single night and it's and we're coming up short more recently than not up until this moment recently that's three weeks and i'm not gonna i'm gonna defend a group of guys rightfully so who i know leave their tails out in that field every night and are hurting and i'm not going to go in there and and turn over a table or get after them because they're frustrated. And yeah, are they pressing? Yeah, I think they probably are on some levels. Do we have conversations about what that looks like and keep the appropriate focus? Because it is, it's such a, it's such a balancing act. And um, this group has veteran leadership and I've been here enough to know how it looks like. It's important that I support them, stay even keel and give them a nudge when necessary. But I don't have to give this group a lot of nudges because this group, um, I, I, it's an impressive group I have a lot of respect for. And there's some people learning what some of this looks like as well. We have a few more of those guys that are learning what that looks like, getting opportunities, figuring out what that looks like. There's a learning curve to that that we're trying to accelerate as quick as we can. But nonetheless, on, the, on a big stage, it still happens. And it's happening. So hopefully that answered your question. I appreciated it. It does. Thank you for, for your candidacy and being honest there. I can share it. Yes, ma'am. Brendan Schaefer, Camo VTV. Mike, you allude to the, the work and the preparation that's going in, and a few moments ago you went up and down the lineup, and the, the track record with all of these names and the guys that have been here before, is that what just makes a, a stretch like this, particularly offensively, just kind of inexplicable for you as the manager, and just knowing that these guys have up and down your lineup have been there and thrived before, like you've seen them do it? Absolutely, and um, that causes the frustration that we talk about because you know, but that's the thing that also causes the comfort for me, at least. And you know, it's a, it's a mindset of how you want to look at it, right? And you know, everybody's going to have their own opinion, rightfully so. It's what makes the game great. And so, um, but I did go through the up and down the lineup. This is a group that's gone through adversity. This group, this is a group that's played, in some cases, a long time in this league that understands what this looks like and how to turn it around. And there's some guys figuring out what that looks like that are a little bit younger. Um, but are also, you know, guys that have experiences in doing it. And, you know, so that does when you look up and you go, man, this is a group that knows what it looks like. It's a group that's made the playoffs the last two years. And, you know, again, we're not, we're not, having, we're not wrestling in laurels. We're building off the laurels. But let's don't forget and make things bigger than they are that, you know, because that's when you get into trouble, I think. And, and look, again, I got to say this, 
No one's going to sit here and say we're as good as we need to be right now. I'm not saying that. I'm not alibying it. We need to improve in areas and be more consistent. No doubt about it. Derek? One quick game question and then one just general question. All right, game. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. The two out walk to Acuna and all that followed there, is that for you where Carlos has start, pivoted and started searching a little bit for his mechanics? Yeah, I agree with that. I think he just fell out of his rhythm of what he was doing. I don't know that he was. Uh, I think early on he felt like he had it, and then I just felt like he just lost his rhythm and his feel for what he was doing, and, you know. So, and then it was he just wasn't able to get it back, and he was either out of it or in it too much, you know. And uh, and, and that was that was part of his issue tonight. He just he wasn't able to repeat what he's doing. He wasn't made, able to make adjustments quick enough. Um, you know, that's the conversation really. If there's a conversation to be had, if you want to talk about, you know, big picture, it's more about what adjustment you need to make to be get back to getting consistent. Those are the type of conversations that we have. And what does that look like? And that's process growth oriented mindset, uh, as opposed to big picture, let's go, you know, we all know we gotta go. We also know it's, you know, still June. Um, and I don't, the game tomorrow is just as important for me as the game in October, because they all matter. Mike, having seen your team last year, and you mentioned all that it overcame, and you know, seeing that firsthand, and understanding that it probably was more behind closed doors, but at least giving myself some credit for picking up on what you guys are going through. I think that set the bar higher for what should be expected from your team, because it was able to get through that. Then you start asking questions, at least from my point of view, you start asking questions because you know what's possible and you know what the expectations are internally. And so when they're not met, that's the driving force. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's a good, that's a different perspective. I mean, I'm, again, I look at it as, um, you know, we're in a tough stretch and how are you going to go and deal with it? And I think we're all naive to not think we're going to play 162 games and not have a tough stretch. And then some of the questions are, how are you dealing with it? And that's how I use it as an example of dealing with it. I get the fact there's expectations. I also get the fact that, you know, we've, we've got some some things that we need to improve upon and some areas that, that uh, we need to improve. 